So, it is 10 o'clock at night, and I need to get to bed because I am going to see a neurologist in the morning, bright and early, 8 o'clock. And I was just checking my blood pressure, which seemed pretty decent, like 129, and the other arm was 135. Oh, I just missed a kitty come in. But I was sitting on the bed, looking up at the sky, and saying to God, Lord, thank you so much for for creating me and all the people in my life and my beautiful family and my children and Stephen. And then I said to God, Lord, please show me, because I thought that this would be helpful to you also to let you know that, you know, please teach me, Lord, how to look at Stephen's death, right? Like, I miss him. Like, I can't even explain. It's so incredibly frustrating that I can't convey, right? The anguish that we feel at this house. But God is not stupid, as my mother has always said. And how should we look at this, right? How can I look at this to rejoice Right, that one day I will see him again. That is our Catholic faith, and I can still commune with him. Okay, and that's what the church teaches. So, as long as they teach it, I don't have to guess. Oh, can I? Can I not? I can be reassured. So, because it's still Lent, I have to turn my light back on and read a holy book hey hello so this is a good book this was my father's book it has his name inside i love it and it teaches you all the secrets see a lot of people don't understand the mysteries in the blessed mother okay she is the tabernacle that's where jesus when, he, when God chose it to be this way for Jesus to be in Mary's womb, that is the Ark of the Covenant. See, and there's so many secrets, and that's what this book teaches you. Um, because you don't have to be afraid of Mary, okay? Our Lady only ever points to her son, okay? Um... There are novenas that you could do and consecrations that you could do that will show you that you can find Jesus without Mary, but the surest and securest way is through his mother, right? Like if you go into a kingdom and you bypass the, the queen with sort of a no acknowledgement, you know, oh, you're just the same as, as I am kind of attitude, then you're not going to be welcomed there by the king. Sorry, he's going to respect his mother 100%. And she was made perfect for him. So I love this book. So this, there's so many secrets. If you could ever get this, see, Mr. Kitty, stop it. Hey, 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 down, down. Don't even think about scratching that chair. You got your mattresses, kid. Now he's going after my desk chair. Get out of there. So, and thank you. So try to get this book if you can, okay? And if you're not used to hearing that kind of lingo of, you know, how to find Jesus through Mary, go slow. Read a little, a little section at a time and then close the book and ask Our Lady to help you understand and then, you know, meditate upon that for a while. Before I go and listen to my video about sugar and Dr. Berg, he is so good. He's telling you all about um, what happens to the body. Oh my gosh. Mister, he's showing you what happens to the body. What are you? <laughs> he's trying to get into my drawer. Oh my gosh, look. Oh, okay. He decided to jump on the desk. Mr. Kitty, can you cut it out? Oh, anyway, 
Uh, he shows you all that happens to the body after you stop eating sugar. You know, the only sugar I have had in the last two months, I can literally recount them, and that was one wedge of a brownie at a funeral reception and one cookie and I, and I didn't feel good after that. I felt weird. My body didn't like that, even though my taste buds did. And some sugar in some of the yogurts that I bought that I was refusing to throw out. So, but isn't that funny, right? We'd rather put it in our bodies so we don't waste it, you know? And I just don't want the havoc. And I thought about it today, right? I thought about it today that, you know, when people say... You know the saying that's um, everything in moderation? I was thinking about that, right? Now, Dr. Berg doesn't like certain fruits because um, of the high sugar levels that are in it. So, and that can spike your insulin level. Okay. So, I don't even know still how I feel about all of that. It doesn't matter how I think or feel. But, you know, occasionally I like to have a half a banana at a time or an orange, because I know they have these nutrients as well as the high sugar. So what I like to get is the little, instead of the big oranges, I like to get the little clementines. And, um, but I'll see how my blood sugar is holding out and when I get tested again in May. But everything in moderation, to me, would be all the healthy foods. So when God says, I give you the fruits of the trees, I'm saying have that in moderation. Do I know everything? No. But I'm saying I don't want moderation of a cupcake, a piece of cake, you know, all this trash in my body. I'm trying to heal my body because I had such a crazy episode it happened, you know, weeks ago that I'm really taking my body extremely serious now and it will catch up with you. So when we have this way about ourselves, well, I don't want to cheat myself and I don't want to run myself and I don't want to diet. And, you know, the outlook ought to be, at least for me and my girls is, and even my son, you know, how can I take care of my body? How can I nourish it? How can I look at food in a really good way, right? So yes, don't be afraid of food, but everything in moderation, I don't think that pertains to putting sugar, which is an evil thing, especially for people who are addicted to it, okay? And I guess I was, and the scare of what happened to me that, that fear really woke me up. It gave me the strength, you know, and maybe nothing's happened to you and hopefully it doesn't, but it seems like it just, things catch up with your body. Your body can only handle so much and it tries to keep up and it tries to keep up. And then it's just, it's just, they it can't do it anymore. It's like, it's had enough. So it just stops, you know, taking care of you because it can't, it gets tired. So I just, you know, I bought muffins for my son. Someone brought over a piece of cake. 1-800-JULIO. He brought us a piece of cake. And it was so beautiful looking. Like, oh my gosh. It was so, it had a hard chocolate on top. And the cake was so big. And I'm like, oh my gosh. It looks so good. It had a layer in between. I'm like, oh. But I was like, you know what? I what I What I do is, is I picture that going into my mouth and and that sugar going to my eyes, right? And causing diabetes and trying to make me blind and, you know, giving me high blood pressure and clogging my arteries. And you might say, but Lisa, that's not going to happen if you have it once in a while. The problem is, is that it's like a lust for me. You know, I just don't want it once in a while. I want it a lot. And, um, you know, even pastas and things that increase your... <clears throat> your level. So I don't, I might have say a lot of carbs in my Ezekiel bread, or I might have it in my chickpea pasta that I have sometimes, but I like that skinny pasta. That's really good. It has no carbs or that palm 
lasagna. Oh my gosh, it doesn't, it has like four grams. So, you know, I'm just learning and taking care of the body. And I just want to encourage you, maybe you've had no scares or even if you had scares, you know, really take care of yourself. Like I get this prescription bottle over there. I don't want to take it. It's to lower my um, cholesterol. Um, it's not skyrocketing at all, but I just got to take my vitamin C and make sure that I'm not clogging my arteries because vitamin C, Dr. Berg says it takes care of your arteries. So I really just want to be super healthy. I do. I want to, I'm so fat still, you know, and I don't want that. I don't want to be fat. No. And it's all in my gut. Ugh. I just want it to end, you know, and then my double chin and I just want it gone. This is not how God has created me. This is not how I look. This is not how the, the I, this is not okay. I'm, I'm, I'm making my body work harder than it should. And, um, you know, it's been on the 13th of this month. It will be two months that I have been doing so well. And I just want to, does that make any sense? So I'm going to go read my book. Thanks for listening. And I, I, I just talk like that because fresh all I can, and it's my channel. And I want to encourage you to do the same. So physically and spiritually. So I told myself for Lent that I would read um, good holy books to feed my soul. I've already fed my body nutrition today. So now I must feed my soul. And yeah. Jesus through Mary. Oh, I want to tell you too that when I was eating at night, right, I'd eat before I go to bed, right? I just love to eat at night. It's wonderful, but it isn't really, right? In the moment, it's wonderful, but I would go to bed and I would snore so loud that I would, my throat would hurt. I would wake myself up because I couldn't breathe. I don't have sleep apnea. I already tested that for that. And then my kids would be like, Mama, I tried to come to your room and you were scaring me. You know, it didn't sound like snoring. So what I decided to do was put my phone over here on the side of my bed and I would record myself all night long sleeping. And it was so scary. Like, it was like a frightening movie. It wasn't snoring. I don't know what it was. It sounded like suffocation and terribleness. And so... I went to a lung specialist. They told me that I did not have asthma. I was misdiagnosed for over 20 years and that he believes it was something that he himself had was um, silent acid reflux, right? So I don't feel the burn and all this. And then once he said that, I was like, you know what? Now that you're talking, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can feel it right now. It was so subtle, but then he brought my mind to it. I was like, I guess I was kind of used to it, right? So... I started noticing that I was having these acid reflux problems. Well, he said, don't eat four hours before you go to bed. So, um, because he says the food has to get out of the first chamber to move down further. He goes, liquids, they just fly right through. So you can do what you want with that. So what I thought was... Now, I'm the other night, I ate before I went to bed a couple of hours, like two hours. I didn't wait the four. And um, I noticed it was the only time when I listened back in the morning that I was snoring more. Not crazy like I was, but definitely it was there occasionally, okay? When I don't eat, so if I like stop at five o'clock at night or earlier then I don't, it's like all I have is kind of heavy breathing. And I really believe it's because of the weight that I am. Okay. And, um, because my body has extra weight on it, I have a feeling that's why I'm, <sighs> you'll hear like that. You don't hear any more snoring when I don't eat four hours before. So if you're having that problem, you feel like it's suffocating and choking and waking yourself up. Oh my gosh, don't eat before you go to bed, like four hours, seriously. And because um, then you wake up, you're exhausted, you're not really in full sleep, you're suffocating, you're just like traumatizing your body. So don't do that. And if you find that you're sighing a lot throughout the day, like, 
you know, people are like, what's the matter? And you're like, oh, nothing. They think that you're bothered, right? And you're annoyed. And so you're, you're doing that. But that's not why usually. It's just because your body's overweight and you need to breathe in extra oxygen for those cells, the extra weight that you have. So that was interesting. I learned that through a um, nutritionist I saw many years ago. But um, I need to read. And I wanted to encourage you not to eat before bed. It makes a big difference. Your body needs to rest. My friend Peter is all about not eating like after four o'clock in the afternoon because he's like, Lisa, your body has to rest. So fasting is a number one thing that I know I noticed helps me um, feel really energized and feel good. And I don't cough anymore, you know, so my body's spending more time healing and repairing and then I'll eat. I do want to straighten it out more and have like maybe one to two meals a day and walk away, not be like, oh, there's a window of time that I can eat <clears throat> whatever I want. Because that's what I'm learning that you can do too. But I don't, because I have this problem with food, always wanting to chew, I think that to turn my vice into a virtue is to make it, you know, here's the time I'm choosing to eat my first meal. Let me put it on a plate, whatever it is that I want on it, and leave it alone. And then walk away. And then a couple of hours later, if I still want to eat in that window of time, maybe four hour period, fine. And then call it quits. Like, never mind running to this or that. Or hey, 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 well, I still have time to eat. Because then I notice it prolongs things for me. So I'm telling you this in case you are trying to figure out why you're struggling in certain areas. I know it works for me. I have to be on a strict schedule and it works great for me. Maybe you don't like to be strict. Maybe you don't have to be strict. For me, oh yeah, I must. Okay, I just read a little section and I am going to read it to you because you need to know this. You may not know what I'm going to show you right now. Application of the holy slavery to the interior life to the exterior. So when I read about St. Louis de Montfort, which I'm going to explain to you right now, um, he is the, the saint who has a book on... Um, how to find Mary and how to consecrate yourself to her. And you might say, this sounds weird. This is not, um, you know, honoring Jesus and it's only Jesus. You might, when I read to you what I'm going to read to you, you must understand that none of this is worshiping Mary, okay? The Blessed Mother, the Holy Virgin. We are not worshiping her. She would be highly insulted to think that that's what we wanted was to worship her. She does not want that. When we say what we're going to say, it is a holy slavery into her arms and into her heart for her son. Does that make sense? So, all right. So this is the secret. So I am consecrated. There's a picture. I am consecrated to the Blessed Mother. I am a slave to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. See, her son, if you notice, they have the same hearts, right? Her heart is is his heart. She only points to Jesus. So spiritual exercises of the interior life. I shall not rest until I have found Mary, said St. John Birchman's. Faithful servant of Mary, has not your heart sent forth the same interior cry a thousand times? While you were reading the beautiful pages of St. Louis de Montfort, the consecrated book I was telling you about, on the life of Mary in the Christian soul, and to be more sure of winning the good graces of this exalted queen, have you not already consecrated yourself to her? Or, at least, are you not determined to do so very soon, giving yourself to her perfectly and entirely, leaving to her all that you possess, even the value of your good works? What joy... You will thus give to the heart of Jesus. You see? What joy you will thus give to the heart of Jesus when you do this. What charity you will practice towards your neighbor. And what blessings you will draw down upon yourself by choosing Mary as your supplement and your all with God. But you must understand that 
The essential part of this perfect devotion consists in trying to the best of your power and at every moment of your life to do all your actions through Mary, with Mary, in Mary, and for Mary, as has been explained in The Secret of Mary. That must be another book. In order to help you practice this devotion, I shall give you some considerations on the pious practices of certain saints who have distinguished themselves by their love for the Queen of Heaven. May they contribute to establish more and more the reign of Mary in your soul and enable you to enjoy its interior consolations, its comforts. So with that said, you have to understand if this is new to you, Okay, and maybe you've been taught, and I'm only saying this, say, I mean, in the days of old, this is normal, okay? Um, when, because in the last 500 years, okay, Protestants, um, people left the Catholic Church to, and that was Martin Luther, Martin Luther's fault, he left the church as a Catholic priest because he saw wrongdoing in the church. and But you don't leave the institution that God established to go and do your own thing. That is just crazy. So, um, I mean, Judas was right there at the beginning of it all, you know. So, and Jesus picked him. So, you don't leave the institution that God established, okay, um, because you see something in it that you don't like. Okay, so with that being said, um, this is normal practice all of this time, okay, ever since 2,000 years. So, G God himself chose the avenue of placing Jesus, our Lord and Savior, in Mary. And you might be like, yeah, so what? He had to get here some way. No, he could have came here like poof, but he chose this way. And to say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And then we ask her, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Because the church has the authority to say we can pray. This is, they know, they know, the church, all the forefathers, ever since Christ established the church, um, the church has the authority to say how it goes. So they're teaching you through this book how to how to do this, right? So Protestants come along and they say, no, 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 this whole Mary thing, this is not this is not how you do it. They take it's taken away from Jesus, and no, it's actually not. See, the devil doesn't want you to find Jesus wholeheartedly the way that you really should. You'll find Jesus, but you could enjoy him even more with his family and the proper ways of going through Mary. And you might say, oh, no, that's not the way because you're saying, you know, like God, God's design is more perfect than what we know it without Mary. Okay. She only makes it everything better to just like God chose to do it. Right. So we have to imitate the way God did it. God chose to go through Mary to bring Jesus to us. And so to get back to God, we go through Mary to get to Jesus because it's the perfect way. How do I know that? Because that's the design God chose to do it. So that's all we're doing is imitating God. That's it. Period. That's the way he wanted it. So that's how we should go because he knows that is, and it's more than just, oh, you know, she gave birth to him. No, it's more than that. It's bigger. It's huger. It's just magnificent and it's perfect. So I thought that would be helpful to a lot of you if you didn't know that. So I wanted to bless you with that. Okay. Good night. I always look at a picture of something holy, usually Jesus and Our Lady. And I always, so that's the last thing I see. And then the last thing I do, the last thing I do is so sort of physically bless myself. And the last thing I say, so if I die in my sleep and you see me dead in the morning and you go to my wake and you see me in the coffin, you will know that the last thing, if I die in my sleep, the last thing that I saw 
did and said was my eyes saw Jesus and Mary. And I said, I do this in the name of the, you know, the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. But I say, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Okay. And then I try to shut my eyes quickly after I look at them. Because that's the last thing I want to see. The last thing I do with my hands. And say with my mouth. Isn't that awesome? I learned that. It was so beautiful. And I've been doing it for years. It's great. And also in the morning too. Oh man, I am trying so hard to get myself to sleep. I read My Little Holiness. I don't read too much of that book because I really got to let it soak in. Um, but I keep thinking of something. Um, oh my gosh, what was it? Oh yeah, that... I think my anxiety level has decreased a ton in the last two months and it's only getting better because first of all, I am going to give my 54 day novena all the credit on the planet. Yes, because I was praying for cancer patients and a bunch of other things. But in it, I said, please help me to lose weight. Well, not only that, but now... That's what I love is like these prayers are helping me to not only look at the superficial things I was praying for, but give me so much more insight, right? Like about the sugar that I was telling you about. But I think that it also is helping me not feel anxious and all discombobulated and weirded out because I got all these different crazy sugars and drugs, I'll call them, because it's horrible food for you. Excuse me running through my veins you know what I'm saying here and so my heart can rest you know I'm doing my 30 minute workouts and I think that it helps me sleep better I just think it, has, it gives you so much more goodness so I just want to encourage you with that okay I had to tell you oh my gosh you know and it's like I keep talking I know but so tired right now you know it's like I can see in my face the puffiness I can see I look I feel like I look sick you know my skin color is just so not good you know I feel like it's I know I'm aging and I get that and we lose that nice pretty color and as we had once when we were young but I feel so older and more sick it's like a sickly color it's not a pretty color it's not you know what I mean and I just want that to be I want I want it so when I'm eating and nourishing my body that all the nutrients is like you know like the creams that you might put on your face to make you look healthier or sitting in the sun and getting that vitamin d in a tan you know I want my the food to nourish and the vitamins and the nutrients and the minerals to to cover that for me, you know what I mean? To to help me not look sick anymore. I can see it now. Yeah. So it's helpful. Do the right thing. Here I was at a family parade in my hometown. My whole most of my family was there. But look at my beloved father. He's even holding up signs for the Lord. Oh my gosh, he's such a lion of God. Stephen in the hat. This is a picture in 2018 of most of my brothers and sisters. There's still six of them missing and here's all their spouses and still some of them are missing and just what a beautiful family I have. Thank you God.